on the news tonight. President Mohamed Buhari to attend Senegal President's inauguration on Tuesday. In business, the federal government begins simplification process for property registration. And on the foreign scene, Algerian President Abdulaziz Bouteflika to resign before April 28. A very warm welcome to Super Screen's flagship news. We're broadcasting to you live from Lagos State, Nigeria. I am Olamide Omuka. Many thanks for joining us tonight. And we'll begin with the story where the President, Mohamed Buhari, will depart Abuja on Monday for Dakar, Senegal, to attend the inauguration of Senegalese President, Marquis Sall, following his re-election for a second term. The President's Special Advisor on Media and Publicity, Femi Adeshino, who confirmed this development in a statement in Abuja, said the President's trip followed an invitation from his host. According to the statement, President Mohamed Buhari, who is ECOWAS chairman, will be special guest of honor at the ceremonies to be attended by all the African leaders at the Diamandiao Exhibition Center on Tuesday. It stated that President Mohamed Buhari will be accompanied by Governors Mohamed Abubakar, Nasser El Dufai, and Tago Al Makura of Bauchi, Kaduna, and Nasser Estates, respectively. In other news, the Code of Conduct Tribunal, the CCT, has ordered the Director of the Code of Conduct Peru, the CCB, to appear as witness for Justice Walter Nagin in his ongoing trial for alleged non declaration of assets. The CCT Chairman, Justice Danladi Umar, ordered the Director at the CCB in Benin, Theresa Wafo, to appear before the Tribunal on Wednesday by 10 a.m. following a request by Justice Nagin's counsel. You will recall that the tribunal had on Friday dismissed Justice Onogin's no-case submission, insisting he had a case to answer and ordered him to open his defense on Monday. At the Justice Onogin's counsel, Adigbuiga Awomolu, said the proceedings from Friday's hearing had not been made available to the defense. He then made a request for Theresa Wampo to be subpoenaed to appear as a witness for the CJN, a position the prosecution counsel did not object to. In his ruling, the chairman of the tribunal granted the request and ordered her to be at the tribunal on Wednesday by 10 a.m. I cross-examine the witness. Like I said, I will do so to the best of my ability. I'm happy that this case is now going on. He has opened his defense and we are going on. Away from that, the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibanjo, says the federal government is making frantic efforts towards addressing poverty in the country. The Vice President, who made this known at the 50th Convocation Lecture of the University of Lagos State, Unilag, said the new reforms of the government is geared towards job creation and tackling corruption. A combination of theft of public revenues and the consequent failure to invest in infrastructure as well as the Delivering his lecture at the 50th Earth Convocation of the University of Lagos, Unilag, a Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, said economic and growth plan of President Muhammadu Buhari's administration will address poverty, unemployment and corruption faced in Nigeria. Our major problem has always been grand corruption, the direct stealing of government resources. It was clear to us that we needed to devise an economic plan, you know, which would, one, prioritize the building of infrastructure, especially rail, roads, power, and ports, two, productivity. Productivity had to be our guiding principle as we diversify the economy from oil and gas. Three, the fight against corruption, especially public sector corruption. Four, developing a new educational curriculum that emphasizes science, technology, engineering, arts and maths, and also emphasizes some of those critical skills needed for the jobs of the 21st century. Five, a new approach to resourcing healthcare. Six, a social investment program that deals with issues of extreme poverty and unemployment. The Economic Recovery and Growth Plan effectively addressed many of these issues that I've mentioned. 
The vice president also said new reforms have been adopted to tackle poor education, part of which is to compel states in Nigeria to provide more resources for education of teachers and their health care. Oris Watt, the vice chancellor of the University of Lagos, Professor Oluwatui Ugundikwe, read out the educational achievements of the university and her students. For the past two, three, we've been using our video communication lecture. And our students, they have exhibited skills, innovation in different. One last to the U.S. physics competition among about 65 awards. Also to Dubai for management. It's from all over the world. And they went for the robot in Ethiopia. Also at competition with schools showing that because surely is the nation's pride. In the area of our students are showcased and also the, the vice president's work is going on in the nation hall. You will see some three draws and I'm sure months we are going to come. As staff in the area of have been exhibiting in different uh, we just won the four billion dollars, four point five billion the counterpart funding from five billion dollars uh, Africans for the University of Liverpool. The whole essence of an academic environment is to display variety, is to show that your knowledge base is very wide. So really, the more diverse the academic gowns you're wearing at a location like this, the more you are the university strictly so-called. The university's convocation continues on Tuesday 2nd to end on Friday, April 5, 2019. Adinike Wenge Ajibwe, reporting for Super Screen News. And still in the education sector, the Joint Admission and Matriculations Board, JAM, has blacklisted 14 computer-based test centers for deceit and other forms of infractions during the 2019 mock Unified Tertiary Ex Matriculation Examination, the UTME. JAM Registrar Professor Isha Koloyede, who made the disclosure in Abuja, said the board has disaccredited 14 out of the 712 centers while monitoring its mock examinations for one infraction or the other for deceit. The mock examination is free in jam centers, jam owned centers. We have been emphasizing it because we are testing our system. So we do not need to ask candidates to pay. But centers owned by other private people, they have the right to their 700 naira from every candidate. Like here now, it's a private place. And since we didn't establish the place, we didn't buy fuel for them. Anybody who wants to do um, mock examination there, must, we have pegged the price to 700 naira, which we believe is the, uh, mini, uh, the most meaningful or reasonable uh, amount. So we want you to continue to help us educate people okay. so that they can have, uh, uh, we can have smooth examination. Although they emphasize that mock examination is free in all jam centers across the country, noting that candidates do not need to pay more than 700 naira fee charged by private-owned centers for maintenance. The majority leader of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabiamila, has declared his bid to contest for the position of the Speaker of the Ninth House of Representatives. Bajabi Amila, who made this known in Abuja, said the House of Representatives was established to be the people's house and to handle the people's business. The father said the qualities of a speaker should be one who will handle affairs of the house and champion the cause by fulfilling their hopes and aspirations. He therefore called on members of the house to support his ambition. It is because of this unshakable belief in the potential and genius of Nigeria and the majesty of our democracy. That I today, after wide consultations with my colleagues, my friends, family, party, and stakeholders, and in total submission to the will of God, today formally declare my intention to seek the position of the office of the Speaker of the Ninth Assembly and offer my services 
to be mentioned in this capacity, impactful legislation. Historically, the House of Representatives was established to be the people's house and, for the, and to do the people's business. It follows, therefore, that the speaker must be the people's speaker, elected to do the people's business and champion their cause, and in doing so, fulfill their hopes and aspirations. This is the speaker I intend and hope to be. And the house I intend and hope to lead, a people's house. So help me and help us, God. Thank you very much. In his reaction, the senator representing Kano State, Abdul Mumi in Jubrin, as well as those from the opposition parties, expressed their support for Bajabi Amila. Our candidate is seated here with the risk of being immodest, with the risk of sounding posterious, and of course, talking from an informed individual who has been in the system for a very long time. I will not be making a mistake if I say Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila stand out as the best candidate we can offer. <laughs> if you are talking about experience, you can beat him. If you are talking about brilliance, astuteness, ability to organize, manage situation, relate with people, build relationship, build relationships. <laughs> When you have Baba uh, Jamila, then your job is done. And meanwhile, the Niger Police Service Commission has promoted 8,916 police officers across the 36 states of the Federation. In a statement from the commission spokesman, Ikechu Kuani, 71 assistant commissioners of police, including the force public relations officer, Frank Kumba, were elevated to the next rank of the deputy commissioner of police on Sunday. Ani further said the PSC also approved the promotion of three commissioners of police to the next rank of assistant inspector general of police. The CPs are Jonah Mava, Olushola David and Titus Lamode, who are yet to be posted to their zonal commands. And now the Lagos State Tax Force and Environmental Sanitation and Special Offenses has impounded 109 motorcycles for operating on restricted routes. Chairman of the Tax Force, Olain Kaigbeyemi, who disclosed this, said the motorcyclists were operating on restricted routes and driving against traffic and the second rainbow end of Oshodi Apapa Expressway. According to Agbayami, the raid was carried out after several warnings to motorcyclists after a series of complaints were received from the public on the illegal and criminal activities of the riders. He also urged Motorcycle Riders Association across the state to educate their members on the 475 restricted routes and the life-threatening danger surrounding plying highways and expresses. And with coming up tonight in Super Screen's flagship news, the federal government begins simplification of the property registration process. That's in business. We'll bring you details of this story and many more after this break. Welcome back to Super Screen's flagship news and now for some business stories. The Presidential Enabling Business Environmental Council says it has commenced reforms towards making property registration and construction permits easy in all states across the country. The PEBC, which disclosed this in a statement, said the reform initiatives in conjunction with the Lagos State Government includes removing the infrastructure development charge for two-floor warehouse construction permit eliminating the requirement for a certified true copy of title documented construction permit application process. And you will recall that the PEBC was set up in 2016 by President Mohamed Buhari to address constraints to doing business and making the country a progressively easier place to start 
and grow business. And now the Minister of Finance, Ahmed Zainab, has called on the National Assembly to amend the Procurement Act in a way that would remove bottlenecks in the budget implementation process. Speaking on the 2018 budget performance before the Senate Committee on Finance, Ahmed noted that most ministries, departments and agencies of government are behind in their budget performance due to complicity in the procurement process. The Minister of Finance, however, said the 2018 national budget performance has reached 55% average of over 3.633 billion, including personnel of 1.3 trillion naira, while the actual releases to the ministry is 2.77 billion of overhead. There are some agencies that are more efficient in their capital spend than others. But what we've seen across board is there's a lot of delays due to procurement processes. The procurement processes is really hampering the effectiveness of the performance of the budget. And I really do hope that in the next assembly, the Senate will look at how to uh, improve on our procurement process, maybe by way of some, of, uh, some amendment to the Act to reduce um, the complexity of the, of the process. BPP is having to review almost everything. And it takes a lot of time. You, you queue for a long time before approvals come, before you make progress. The Chairman, Senate Committee on Finance, Senator John Ennor, questioned the reflection of the Ministry performance on national budget. We end up having not just challenges of releases, but even when money is released, FDA is not able to spend. Again, this is Minister of Finance. The implementation is about 30% on capital in spite of monies that have been released. And I'm looking at the capital items for 2018. I mean, you have, it, it, it's about two major that you, so what is the reason why the Minister of Finance is not spending money that is released? Now, what implication does this have? Even for other ministries, LDAs, uh, you know, that it, it's a, um, that are huge capital implementing ministries, you know, departments, I mean, it's a, uh, it's, uh, the Ministry of Budget and National Planning. But if the Ministry of Finance can't even spend its capital, what moral vision would it have to see that other MDAs utilize the monies that are used? And now for the stock market report, Nigerian equities closed the first quarter with net capital depreciation of 49 billion naira, a sharp reversal from the bullish trend that saw equities with net capital gain 1.38 trillion in the first quarter of 2018. All major indices at the Nigerian equity market closed weekend negative despite the onset of earnings season that had seen most active companies declaring steady earnings and dividends. Nigeria's sovereign equity index, the all share index of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, indicated average year to date return of minus 1.24% for the first quarter, implying an adjusted net depreciation of 145 billion during the three month period ended March 31st, 2019. Aggregate market value of quoted equities on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, however, dropped by 49 billion naira, supported by new supplementary listings during the period. Still ahead tonight on Super Screen's flagship news, the Algerian president, Abdulaziz Bouteflika, to resign before April 28. That's on the foreign scene. We'll bring you details of this story and many more after the break. <laughs> 